Hi, I'm Brian Calhoun, and this is Bridge the Atlantic. Welcome to Bridge the Atlantic's interviews, where we get to know the people behind and in front of the creative industries. If you're new here, consider subscribing for more episodes. We are your hosts, music web designer Ross Barbersmith from Scotland, owner of Electric Kiwi, where we create awesome custom websites for bands, artists, and musicians. And I'm singer songwriter and multi instrumentalist, a little sick Marciano Valley from Canada. When I'm not releasing music or doing this show, I'm producing records or vlogging as the crazy vegan. Isn't Marcio a trooper, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you. Send him some love. Thank Send you. him some love. <laughs> Before we uh, jump into the interview, we do just want to let you know that we are on Patreon and you can become a Bridger, that's your official title, from as little as a dollar per month. You'll gain access to our exclusive new Encore series featuring never before seen videos with our guests and your support will allow us to keep bringing you weekly videos here at Bridge the Atlantic. You can also head over to our website to pick up one of our shirts. If you use the coupon code BTA Rocks, you'll receive 20% off your order. Joining us this week out of Atlanta is Brian Calhoun. Brian is the creator of a, uh, the creator of the Music Business Toolbox, which breaks down in easy to follow steps what both brand new and experienced music industry professionals need to do to get to the next level. Brian has spoken on panels and taught workshops at all of the key music industry conferences, including South by Southwest, MIDEM, and of course CMJ. He's also worked with artists including Kanye West, Questlove, Nicki Minaj, and Drake over his 25 year career so far. We're excited to get to know more about Brian and the advice he'd offer to his fellow musicians. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Brian. Thank you. Glad to be here. Glad to have you. Very now, excited Brian, about this. We are super awkward. So we, we want to bring you into the fold and we want to make you feel a little bit awkward too. So All right. <laughs> please tell us three things about yourself that everyone should know. Um... I would say probably what's most relevant for this audience is that I feel like I am an advocate for musicians, uh, musicians and independent uh, labels. I'm always fighting for the for the underdog and uh, really like to support that community. Um, what else? I am a member of Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Uh, and let me see, I just moved to Atlanta. So Brian, um, as someone who has worked with many developing artists and established artists alike, is there one common trait that you see between those who manage to turn their music into a viable career? There are a few things. Uh, one is certainly talent. Uh, musicians that I've worked with that have had a, a, a great deal of success, they're all really talented. They all work really hard. Um, they all have, all people that I've worked with have had really good people with them, they've had really good teams, but probably one of the uh, the things that I don't really hear people talking about uh, that I've noticed with all of the like super 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 successful artists is they have uh, a really high level of intuition. Just it's something like otherworldly. Like I just they just get things, and I just it's kind of amazing seeing it. It's also with executives as well. So some music industry executives that I've worked with and also some just other business executives, but a really high level of intuition. But I think certainly the thing that, and, and that seems, to, I'm not sure how well you can develop that. It seems to be something that some people kind of just have. Uh, but the other things are things are, are, are things that you can actually work on and, uh, and do yourself. Certainly working hard, certainly working and uh, honing your craft and building and putting the right team of people around you. It's funny because the, the intuition thing comes up a lot, um, Does it? especially when we ask people about like, you know, if there's things that they would have done differently, they always say, I would have listened to my gut because, yeah. you know, when you don't follow your gut, that's kind of when things go wrong. I mean, when it comes to the intuition, can you spot that in someone or uh, not necessarily always, but there have been some, some specific conversations that I've had with people where, um, yeah. Uh, so I'll give you a, a great example is I worked with Kanye West, as you mentioned, on his digital properties years ago. And before, before Tumblr, before Instagram, um, before sort of like the web design as we know it and as you know it, obviously very well, he wanted his website, his destination to the design that he wanted. He was actually interesting. We looked at an art book 
And he was like, I want it to look like this with really big pictures and just, you know, little or no text. And the the design that we ultimately created for his blog was something I'd never seen before, but it's kind of like what Tumblr and Instagram look like now. And this was in 2005 and I just had never seen, and he just, it was just this intuition that he had mm-hmm. that I was like, this is what I think it should look like. And we made it and it was wildly successful. I, I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, now you must get uh, asked a lot of questions by artists, like ridiculous amount of questions. Are there questions that come up time and time again that you'd like to basically answer for us right now? Maybe something that artists should do or avoid uh, to help get their careers on the right track? Sure. So uh, there's, you know, what can I do to get above the clutter? How can I make it kind of like those big questions? But uh, sort of the latter part of what you said is, you know, what can I avoid? What are the mistakes that I can avoid? And and I say this quite a bit, but I think the biggest mistake that I see musicians make is the way they allocate their budget. So everybody has a budget, no matter how big you are or how small you are. You know, you may have worked hard and saved up your money and said, okay, you know what, I've got $2,500 or $5,000 or $10,000, whatever that number is to put towards your project. But the big mistake that I see people do time and time again in terms of allocating that budget is they will allocate all of it or almost all of it towards the recording process and leave nothing for everything else. And that is a recipe for disaster. So if you put together $10,000 and you're like, I'm going to make a go at it. This is going to be my year. I'm going to take this $10,000 and make, make my record and make it happen. Well, if you take $9,500 of it to record, you may get the best sound that you're looking for, which is great. And I certainly don't want people to not aspire to create great art, but you can't leave only $500 and expect to have the impact that you that you're looking for, and I encourage people to look at other industries. I mean, f- first of all, look at the, at, at the music industry. You know, for major record labels, well, you know, a big artist might have a, a recording budget of five hundred thousand or a million or two million dollars, but the label is going to allocate, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars more to market that record and doing partnerships with companies that are going to allocate even more money to do that. So you may spend a million dollars to record a record, but they may spend four, five, six million dollars to market it. Um, Look at other industries. If GM builds a new truck, they're not going to spend, you know, whatever, I don't even know what, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars in development and then spend zero dollars to market it. They're going to have a Super Bowl ad, right? They're going to spend a ton of money to market it. They're going to want people to hear it. When Pfizer develops a new drug, they may spend whatever, a billion dollars in R&D over years but when that drug hits the market, they're going to spend, you know, tens or hundreds of millions or billions of dollars in marketing it. And that's something that, again, again, I see musicians make that mistake where they just don't allocate any money towards recording. I mean, towards the, the marketing and promotion of it. And they're just they say, well, I'm just going to put it out and see what happens. Well, we know what's going to happen. Nothing. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. And I think as a designer, I can, uh, yeah. I can speak of the, Hey, I've just recorded my album, but I've got no budget to do right. what I need to do. Will you do me a favor? Mm. Right. right. Yeah. Been there. Um, uh, I, so I've heard, I've got, I get that quite a bit too. I've yes, I've done all this. Can you now just do me a favor? Yeah. It's like, come on, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and that's crazy. Um, so I think, you know, obviously you've given, you've shared a little bit of advice with us already, which is awesome. But can you tell us a little bit about the music business toolbox and sure. what some of the things that artists can learn, uh, you know, if, if they register for that? Sure. So I'd like to give you a little bit of context about it, too. So I've worked in the music industry in various capacities. I've worked at record labels. I've worked with management. I've worked in distribution companies, worked at performing rights organizations. And over time, what I did was uh, I saw problems that artists were making and independent labels were making when it came to releasing their music. And throughout the the course of my uh, my career, I sort of put together my own tools and things that I needed in order to be able to, to do my job. And uh, one of the things I had built was some financial 
software for independent labels to manage their finances. And what I realized was even though I could help people with the specifics of their, uh, their finances and doing budgeting and cash flow and profitability analysis on, on recordings, there were still lots of other things that people needed. And I didn't see any one place where all of that information was available. So I literally started out by me putting together a few things that I could, would share with clients that I was doing consulting work for. And it was like, you know, hey, here's what UPC codes are. Here's what ISRCs are. Here's what SoundScan is. Uh, and here's how you register for them. Here's how you register for your copyrights. And then realize that there was a greater need and that it wasn't just the people that I was working with doing consulting work on an independent, on a, uh, on a monthly basis, but lots and lots of independent musicians and labels could use that information. So I took it all together, packaged it up, cleaned it up so that it was, you know, a little bit more user friendly and put it in the music business toolbox so I could guide people through the process of commercially releasing their music and managing their business without going through it, all of the, uh, uh, the things that are really unnecessary for you to be able to execute. So, you know, we may sit on a panel and talk about, I don't know, copyright reform or, uh, uh, what are the equitable royalty rates for non-interactive streaming? But for the musician on a day-to-day -day basis, who's trying to put their record onto the marketplace, that's not what they care about. They don't care about what section of copyright law mandates you know, non-interactive streaming, for instance. But what they do care about is how do I make sure that I get paid when the recordings that I make are played on Sirius or played on Pandora. And so I just made it very actionable uh, uh, and took out all, all of the things that really you don't necessarily need to know in order to be able to act. Sounds great. And I think actually hearing you talk about it, I've got so many people I can send to you because I get asked so many questions and it sounds like you answer them all uh, in the Music Business Toolbox. And I know that uh, Ariel Hyatt of Cyber PR speaks really highly of it and of you. Um, and it definitely sounds like a useful resource for a lot of our viewers and listeners. So we'll definitely put a link to that in the show notes. So great. if you're interested in finding out more about what Brian does, you can find that there. Awesome, Sweet. Brian. Are you ready for 20 questions? All right. I think so. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Meat or veggies? Veggies. Twitter or Facebook? Facebook. Indie or major? Indie. CD or vinyl? Vinyl. Skiing or snowboarding? Snowboarding. Education or experience? Hmm, experience. Marvel or DC? Marvel. Spotify or Pandora? Pandora. Talent or attitude? Attitude. Atlanta or New York City? Atlanta. <laughs> Whiskey or beer? Whiskey. Yoga or yogurt? Yoga. Batman or Superman? Batman. Mac or PC? Mac. My favorite question, Michael Jackson or Michael Bolton? <laughs> Michael Jackson. <laughs> that was super easy. Celine Dion or Marilyn Manson? Marilyn Manson. Whale or kale? Kale. Bette Midler or the Riddler? The Riddler. And your final question, the most important question no one has ever said, Ross or Marcio? Oh man, come on. That's not fair. That's not fair. We never said it was going to be fair. <laughs> oh man, I, that's, that's a draw. I, I'm going to have to, I can't, I'm going to decline to answer that one. It's a draw. And that is the correct answer. <laughs> it's, all right, good, good, good. Brian, one big question that musicians have is how do I get noticed? Um, can you share some quick actionable advice that musicians can put into action today to start getting their music in front of a, a real audience? Uh, be consistent. I think it's probably one of the, uh, the, the biggest things develop direct relationships with people. It might start with, you know, just your friends and, and family, but develop direct connections with those people. The power of email is really surprising, uh, still in this day and age, uh, develop email addresses, uh, provide, uh, value to your fans. So on a regular basis, make sure that you're providing them something. And uh, when you consistently release music, that's also going to really help you. So think about it from, from this perspective. If you have 10,000 Twitter followers, it's easier to go from 10,000 to 11,000 than someone who has 
zero followers to go from zero to a thousand, right? Well, the same thing is true on the streaming services. The recommendation engines that the various services use to, you know, to, to share your music with people uh, and, you know, the ability to, uh, that you have to give your fans to, to follow you on the various platforms, the more music you put out on a regular basis, the more your fans have uh, the opportunity to connect with you. So be consistent and continue to put out music. Obviously, make sure it's great when you put stuff out. Make uh, your your content as high quality as possible. Make sure it's on all of the services. You know, the, as much as you can, put things out on 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 everything. Uh, do videos. Video is an amazing uh, an amazing way to make sure that you're connecting uh, with people and you have uh, more content. Uh, you can have a lyric video, a dead card video with just your audio and a narrative video and a performance video. You could put, you know, you could have four or five videos for the same track, um, but consistently make sure that you're developing the relationships with your fans on each of the, uh, the platforms. And for artists who struggle with the financial or the business side of music, which is probably most of us, yeah. what advice would you offer maybe to help them make the best decisions for their career? Well, get the music business toolbox. I have a lot of information in there about, uh, how, you know, I've got some tools that you can use to actually create your budgets for recording and uh, marketing and touring, which will help you stay on track and also address all of the things that, you know, you, you questions that you may not even think to ask uh, are in there. Uh, be diligent uh, about managing your finances so that you're not allocating too much of your money in one place, but also know what your strengths are. I mean, if you do what your strengths and your weaknesses are and work with other people and help put together, try to put together a team of people that can help you in areas where you may not be as strong. Uh, it could be on finance. It could be on social media management. Uh, you know, you'll want to have a lawyer when it's the right time for, for, for a lawyer, uh, an accountant when it comes time for that. But look, it, it doesn't make sense for you to go and hire a big, you know, uh, accounting firm if you're making, you know, $20,000 a year, uh, but you can use some accounting software to keep track of your expenses and your income. So, uh, just try to be diligent about paying attention to the details, uh, with respect to those things. Such valuable advice, really. I wish I had you a few years back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here now. Now, everyone tuning into this right now, if you'd like to hear more from Brian, you can head over to our Patreon page to check out our exclusive Encore series where we'll be chatting with Brian about making the most out of music conferences. And the special series is just for our patrons, so don't miss it. So, Brian, where's the best place for people to connect with you online? Uh, MusicBusinessToolbox.com website. Uh, I also am at Brian Calhoun at everything, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, and it's B-R-Y-A-N-C-A-L-H-O-U-N. Awesome. We'll put those notes in the, uh, those links in the show notes so that people cool. can, uh, can easily connect with you. And as for cool. us, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Don't forget to visit our website and pick up one of these, these shirts, uh, you know, while you're there. And as for me, I'm working on my new solo album. You can check out my music on Spotify and iTunes and just about everywhere and anywhere you like to stream or download music. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, which are all my name, Marcio Novelli. And I'm working on websites for various artists at the moment. You can check out my work at electrickiwi.co.uk. You'll find me on Twitter and Instagram as Electric Kiwi and on Facebook, Electric Kiwi Design. This episode was brought to you by 30 Roses, a virtual assistant and consultant to musicians and other creatives, as well as Music Entrepreneur HQ and Social Surge. All links are in the description, so please do check them out because they do what, Russ? They keep the show alive. Fantastic. And Fantastic. thank you. Thank you very much. And if you would like to sponsor the show, visit patreon.com slash bridge the Atlantic. We have recently updated our rewards, which now include sponsorship at the start of our interviews, an opportunity for you to co-host an episode of Bridge the Atlantic, and of course, gain access to our exclusive new Encore series. Um, make sure to subscribe on YouTube and iTunes if you like, so you don't miss any episodes. And please do leave us a comment and let us know what you think of this show. Brian, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on British Atlantic. Oh, great. Thank you, guys. <laughs>